Uh, there's a couple of things I just want to go over just before I get into um, uh, the topic of modesty this morning. I just want to make a brief comment on what's happening in the, the media these days and just with what we're hearing on the news in terms of North Carolina. You know, North Carolina, you know, they sort of tried to, with the whole transgenderism, tried to get, you know, people who think they're a girl, people who think they're a male to use the other restroom if they want. And then what happened in North Carolina, I believe, is they put a law in to say that, you know, only if, if you're born with the male genitalia can you use the male bathroom and only if you're born with the female genitalia can you use the female bathroom. So it makes sense to us that that should be in place. Um, but then obviously there was a lot of protesting and a lot of complaints from the homosexual movement to say, oh, it's a bigoted law, it's anti-LGBT. And I suppose it is anti-LGBT. I read as well, you know, uh, an article recently as well in Victoria. You know, supposedly Victoria and Melbourne is, uh, are considered like the progressive states of Australia. And, you know, the politicians in Victoria are sort of trying to lead the charge in saying that, you know, we're a progressive state, we want to, you know, be inclusive of homosexuals and, and push the, the marriage equality and all that sort of uh, nonsense. And uh, recently I think they, they got approval to build what's called the, the Pride Centre in the Melbourne CBD and it's actually funded by taxpayer dollars and it's sort of like a homo museum. That's, that's what they're saying, you know, so it's got like you know, you go into a museum, you learn about like noble figures and about, you know, the, the issues that affect uh, things. So they're making it sort of like that. You go to this pride center and you'll learn about, you know, uh, like homosexual figures that they, they sort of lift up and the issues that they have. You can go there and get free health care and things like that with, you know, uh, you know, because the suicide rate's so high amongst transgender people and all these sorts of things. So. This is what's sort of happening in the news right now, just this, this push for the homosexual agenda. And, you know, obviously I'm as annoyed as anybody else is by the homosexual agenda. But I wanted to sort of turn our focus away in the sense of, you know, we, we look at them and we, we think, you know, has the world gone insane? And obviously, to, from our point of view, the world has gone insane. You know, we're, we're even discussing which bathroom people should use and, and sort of detaching gender identity from actually the, the biological parts that you were born with. Um, but I just wanted to give you this thought this morning. This is from Matthew 5.13. It says, Ye are the salt of the earth, but if the salt have lost his savour, wherewith shall it be salted? It is thenceforth good for nothing, but to be cast out and to be trodden under foot of men. Ye are the light of the world. A city that is set on a hill cannot be hid. Neither do men light a candle and put it under a bushel, but on a candlestick, and it giveth light unto all that are in the house. Let your light so shine before men, that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. Now this is a very famous verse. We know, you know, as Christians, we are the light of the world. We are the salt of the earth. You know, and we look at things that are happening in the political spectrum. We look at things that are happening in the world. And we think, you know, has the world gone insane? And I mean, obviously they have. But when you think of the question, you know, why is the world getting so dark? Why is the world getting so flavorless? Well, it's because Christians are not being salt and light. Because, you know, food, if you add salt to food, that food's going to get salty. You know, if you add light to a dark room, that room will get light. So the reason why the food is flavorless is because there's no salt. You know, the reason why a room is dark is because there's no light. Right? So we have to, you know, stop sort of pointing the blame. And it, this sort of goes into the whole theme of, you know, what can we change? You know, we can't change the homosexual. You know, the homosexual is going to go and push their agenda and cram it down everyone's throat. But we can change what we're going to do. Amen. We can change how bright we shine. We can change how salty we are. So has the world gone insane or are we just losing the spiritual battle? You know, we're just seeing the symptoms of a battle that's being like, I mean, they can't win the war. We know that the war is going to be won Amen. by Jesus Christ when he comes again. But we, are, I believe, we're just seeing these things happen because we're losing the spiritual battle. And we're losing the spiritual battle because if you think about it, you know, you know the, the, the homosexual activists, you know, whether they are homosexual themselves or not, I mean, how are they spending their weekends? You know, they're probably making phone calls, volunteering at homosexual organizations. How are Christians spending their weekends? Going to the movies, you know, serving themselves. You know, what, how, how, are, how are the homosexuals, how are they spending their money? 
I'm sure they pour thousands of dollars into these organizations and, and, you, know, and uh, you know, promoting their political agendas. How do Christians spend their money? So instead of us looking at the, hey, I'm just as annoyed as you are at what's going on in the world, but we've got to shift our focus back to where the real cause of the issue is. And it's God's people. You know, because we're too busy amongst the thorns. We're too busy spending our lives serving ourselves. You know, but they're not. You know, they, they spend their weekends soul damning, right? But then how are Christians spending their weekends? You know, do we spend our weekends soul winning? Do we spend our spare time soul winning? You know, how are we spending our money? So I just wanted to give you that thought this morning because obviously we see what's happening and it's annoying. Yeah, it's, and, it, and we think oh, the world's going crazy. 